Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hey, everybody. Fruit Loop here. Uh, my what you know for this episode is, did you know you can gain calories by licking stamps? Licking one stamp makes you consume one-tenth of a calorie. So if you were to lick 3,000 stamps a day, that would equate to about 16 chicken nugs from McDonald's. And yeah, we call them nugs. So if you need some calories, go send you a letter to 3,000 people and get you some calories by licking stamps. So remember, Gigi is out of town. Uh, I'm taking you back to the older episodes highlighting the Wagner or better known as the Pike County Massacre. Uh, the trial's coming up in August. Uh, just to make sure you understand, we are rebroadcasting these episodes in the order we did them. So obviously there is new happenings with the case, but when we finish, you should be up to speed. Um, there may be an episode next week to catch you up on what we haven't shared with you lately. Um, I'm excited for this broadcast and the series so sit back and take a listen uh we're gonna jump back into the pike county massacre the rodin murders yep and we're gonna recap here just a bit again um i think on our youtube we are going to use the diagram of the family so that way if you're on youtube watching i know sometimes you can't exit out of your youtube app to look at a picture we're going to put this as the header as the main picture um but again grab you a uh a good family tree of who's who we have them on our instagram facebook and twitter if you want to head over to one of those you'll see i found a really good one that's a lot less confusing but we're gonna right now again go through the victims and the accused yep so we have one family chris senior is the dad dana roden is the mother and they have three kids frankie who is the oldest hannah roden who is the middle child and they have little chris who is 16 and the youngest that makes up their family there were two other people or three other people that were shot that are not part of that immediate family hannah gilly was frankie's fiance and they had a child together and then you have <clears throat> gary who is a brother gary was a cousin right oh uh, yeah yeah and then you have kenneth <laughs> See, See oh, I've been too. on this thing for four days and I'm yeah. just, yeah, eyes are crossing. So I kind of feel like Gary and Kenneth were collateral damage, it seems. Yeah, like wrong place, wrong time. Exactly. Um, and then we have our defendants. We have Billy Wagner, who's the dad. Angela Wagner, who's the mother. We have Jake Wagner, who is the son, and also the father of Sophia with Hannah Roden. And then you have George, who is the other son. That's all your players. <laughs> yep. We won't talk about uh, Kenneth and Gary as much just because it, everything seemed to sort of center around the immediate family of Chris Sr. and the Wagners. And we do discuss uh, Rita Newcomb, who is Angela Wagner's mom, and Frederica Wagner, who is Billy's mom. Right. So, just a recap. We all know that eight members of the Roden family who were spread out in four different trailers uh, were murdered overnight. They think sometime between April 21st and 22nd, definitely by 7 in the morning. Nobody was arrested for two years. And there were many theories that floated around about what could have happened and we are going to get to that after we talk about the autopsies yep um so finally the wagner family they were all arrested at the same time in different areas on november 13th 2018 yeah it was kind of like a 
I don't want to say sting operation, but they arrest them all at once. Yeah. So nobody could flee, I guess, or whatever. Well, they found Billy, the dad, Billy Wagner, the dad. Uh, he was hiding in a horse trailer hmm. when uh, when he was apprehended. And I think he was in Kentucky. He was not in Ohio. He had to be, he waived his extradition to go back. So, gotcha. All right. So, before we get into the investigation and then just kind of our thoughts about it, and then we'll jump down to some other stuff, we're going to do some autopsies. We're going to talk about what they found. And I think it's a little telling. These autopsies tell a little bit of a story to me, even with how little we know from the autopsies. They were super heavily redacted. Yeah. It was like, yeah, there wasn't a lot of information. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so looking at Chris Sr., uh, which is the dad, he was shot nine times. Um, his body was decomposed more than the others, uh, and that could mean that he was shot first. Um, he had defensive wounds on his forearm. He actually had a, a gun a bullet gunshot to his forearm, which thinks that, I mean, that makes you think he was defending himself. Mm -hmm. um, he had uh, gunshots to his face, torso, extremities. He was found in his back bedroom. Um, they believe he was drugged through the house to the bedroom. Um, the way his head was tilted leads investigators to believe he was shot through the door. Yeah. And our theory is that we believe um, that Chris Sr. and Gary may have been awake. Yeah. Um, because everybody else was found in the bed with the exception of little Chris, who was found hours later beside his bed. Um, so it just, and, and to me, a defensive wound, just that's, that's exactly where you get them when you're throwing your arms up to not get shot. Yeah. Um, and then he had some bruising on him. So it seems to, I would almost say there was a, there was a panicked moment, uh, before they were killed. That's what it sounds like, because I know Bobby Joe on the 911 call, she says um, that uh, he was beat up, that they were beat up pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, she thought that they had been bashed in. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, then you see uh, Frankie, which is the son, he had three gunshot wounds to the head, two of which show the gun pressed to his head um, due to the... Um, the soot found around on his skull. It's like, I guess, gunpowder residue or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I, I thought they called it like stipling, but suit, whatever. It just shows that yeah. he put the gun directly against his head. Yeah, and they can tell that by, mm -hmm. um, like, the gunshot wound, how close or how far away they were. So, yep. Uh, then uh, little Chris, he had four gunshot wounds to the head, found on the floor beside his bed. And if you'll remember, it took a while for them to find him, so. Yeah, it was, in fact, when they did the first press conference about this, they only um, said they had seven victims. So, yeah, yeah. and then, um, of course, a few hours later, you find out poor little Chris, you know, he was part of it. He was part of the group that, that lost their life. Yep. Um, so then you see we have Hannah Gilly, which was Frankie's fiance. She had uh, five uh shots to the head hannah roden had two shots to the head uh gary had three to the head two to the head one to the face dana was shot five times uh on the right side of her head and once under her chin and then kenneth had one to the right eye i'm gonna tell you a little theory i, I just this popped in my head but um, Hannah Gilly was shot five times, and I, that's one of the higher numbers. Yeah. Because uh, you have two, three, four, you know, for five. But um, you have to understand Charlie Gilly, who Hannah Roden is dating, that's her brother. Yeah. And we have seen some exchanges on their social medias where <clears throat> um, there were some arguments and that kind of thing. Um but I kind of feel like, you know, did Jake see her as maybe the reason Hannah's dating Charlie Gilly? I don't know. There, There's a reason there's five to her, and Frankie had three. Mm -hmm. And they're laying in the same bed. Yeah. Um, could it be that she woke up when Frankie was shot, 
maybe. But it just, sometimes, like, if you look at Kenneth, he had, what, $1,000 in dollar bills scattered from the waist down? Yeah. It was one of them. Was it Kenneth? I think it was Kenneth. Yeah. Wasn't it? It was either him or Gary one. Yeah. And so that's very personal. That's that's a message. Yeah. That is literally uh, a message. Yeah. So I just thought with five shots to the head, it that seemed excessive. Yeah. So who knows? Um, I think that they waited until Hannah had her baby before they did any of this because they were not sure if it was Jake's or not. That's a good good thought. Well, if you think about it, if they're going to, if they know they're going to murder her when she gets home and settled, um, they wouldn't want to hurt this, you know, possible child of, of Jake's. Yep. And if she dies, then the girls can be together with Jake. Yeah. So I just, um, I really do think it the, the time of the murders hinged around when she delivered and got home. Yeah. So, uh, Hannah started posting some pics on her social media of Sophia with her new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And that was like towards the end of the year. Yeah. So, could this be possibly something that set Jake off? Or Angela off? Or or Angela. I I firmly believe she was the mastermind behind all this. I don't know why. Um, I just do. Um, Can I just say I'm glad I'm not in the dating world anymore? Yeah, for real. (laughs) I have to deal with all this drama. Exactly. Um. Angela, one thing I learned about her, she served in the Air Force, but only for a year. And we've not been able to find uh, any kind of discharge papers to tell why it was only a year. Because usually it's at least two, right? Uh, yeah, it depends on what what brand. I mean, like what you're doing, like could be four, two. Yeah. Reserves, I think, might be two. I don't know. Yeah. So back to the morning of the murders when Bobby mm-hmm. Joe Manley went to Chris's ha- Chris Sr.'s house and Gary's house, and, you know, she found them them dead. Uh, they were the only ones that were not in their beds. But the one thing she told police was that the window, I think she told police, or was it the police said something? Either way, the bedroom that Chris Sr. obviously was in, th- there is a picture, too. I can tweet this out later. You can see where the window is raised up. And so we were just trying to figure out, is it that maybe he tried to get out the window? Because I feel like if they busted in and Gary was sitting in a chair, apparently, um, he's got a minute maybe while they're figuring out what they're going to do. Does he try to go out? Because I don't see the killers coming in a window. You're at a big disadvantage. Yeah. I mean, that's one way you get shot as the perpetrator. Yeah. So it, we don't know if um, law enforcement did it because of smell or anything like that, but I kind of would think, um, I don't think law enforcement would lift a window. I think maybe it was lifted and it could be a nice night and he had his window open. Who knows? But that yeah. did stick out to me. Yep. Um, so you talked about uh, <clears throat> that uh, Chris Sr. and Gary were awake and surprised by the Wagners. Um, and we talked about the bedroom window. Here's here's a big question that I have, and we've discussed it. Um, did Jake hack their cameras? Yeah. Um, I mean, we know they hacked their social media. Yeah, and if they didn't have passwords that were super hard, I mean, it. It sometimes I guess it could be easy to um, think of passwords for people you know really well if they don't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot, we, a lot of people use very common passwords. That's true. I mean, you know, like my family, I'm helping my mom, and I'm like, oh, no, we got to change this. <laughs> yeah. No, your fam- your family's passwords make me laugh. But um, when I help them with stuff, I'm like, really? <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so the camera deal for me is kind of a big deal. Because um, like we talked on the other one, you're just not going to know the trajectory of that camera, knowing if you're on it or not. Obviously, if you're... Um, if you can access it and see where to walk, you can avoid it mm-hmm. and stay off of that camera. So the other way to think too is if he knew a password, he could put the app on his phone and then with my cameras, 
I can adjust my sensitivity. I can turn my cameras off myself. So yeah. if, if you're in that app and you turn and you have that password and you turn that camera off, it shouldn't alert the other phones. No. So uh -uh. I it think, doesn't record. Right. So I think that's maybe one way that um, they were able to. It's just a theory. Yeah, that'll be interesting to find out. Yeah, um, because I don't know. I, a family member did say that there was one security camera in a in a birdhouse that they did not think the killers thought of. Um, but if he knows the password, he can go turn every one of them off and have plenty of time to do what he's got to do. Yeah. But then what you could do is, you know, get a forensics on that and find out what device is that registered to? It was registered to Jake Wagner. Ding, ding, ding. Yep. So they're looking into all that, I'm sure. Yep. So you have a theory on who's the mastermind? I think Angela. That's just my gut. Yeah. I don't know that, um, I don't know that Jake and Billy and George seem smart enough to do this. And I don't know them. It's just a hunch I have. Um, you know, from the beginning when the Wagners were named as who they've arrested, they very quickly came out and said, this, this revolves around custody. Yeah. You know, so. You know what it reminds me of? What? <clears throat> it's like the mom on Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You yes. Know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So it kind of, that's the vibe I get. Yeah. Yep. So Bobby Joe. Poor Bobby Joe. Who was the first to find Chris Sr. and Gary. Like, she was put through the ringer for a while. Yeah, like, and it wasn't a day or two. It was a long time. Yeah, like, she took lie detector tests and passed them. Um, that had to be grueling for her. Yeah, well, grueling and just on top of losing pretty much all of your family to be, you know, accused of possibly doing it. Uh, I can't imagine being in, in Miss Bobby Joe's shoes, but she, you know, you're grieving your entire family and then you're under suspicion because you showed up first. Yeah. I mean, you heard her on the 911 call. She was emotional. Oh, yeah. She, um, I would have never, like, if I'd have heard that and not know anything, I'd say she's pretty distraught. Yeah. But I saw uh, on my forensic files one time where a 911 call was made and they sounded hysterical and it could have passed. But then they they brought in a voice expert who was like, no, this is straining the vocal cords to sound like you're freaking out. No way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can tell I, that? I guess he told it. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, so, it, like, they brought in somebody who was analyzing a 911 call, and they were like, no, this, you know, my professional opinion, this is straining. This is not raw emotion. It's like your mama yelling at you when you was a kid. It's like. The straining. It's like my nine-year-old. Straining. You know, yeah, you know how Sarah Rose is. <laughs> she can whip up some tears. That kid's gonna have an Oscar one day. Oh, dude, I'm telling you, y'all better, y'all better put money, buy stock, <laughs> and uh, the Oscar. I don't know something, some kind of stock, because that kid, she can do it. Oh yeah. Yep. As long as she buys me a little little uh, house by the sea. There you go. I'm good. Yep. All right. So the dogs were nowhere to be found when Bobby Joe came for the came to the house first right and then when um i think it's donald stone was the one yep. that found gary Roden, and he had to stay there because when the cops came his dog which i think it was a pit bull named brownie it was wanting to go at the cops and so he was able to go up and calm the dogs down and so to him he knew right then they had to have known who did this? Yeah. Those dogs are trained to be guard dogs. They're vicious. And I think across all their properties, they have like over 20 dogs. So it would have to be somebody in their opinion, and we know it was Jake, who knew those dogs. Yeah. He might have known what treats they liked, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, so um, you found some interesting stuff on Dana. Um, that she was seen by a co-worker the night of the murders on the phone upset? Yeah, so the night of the murders, uh, Dana worked a double shift, which I don't think she had intended to. And so, so soon after the murders, people that knew and loved them and worked with them started 
making comments and on social media and some talk to the press. And it, it was said that a coworker had seen Dana outside and she, she was very upset on the call and said something to the effect of, I shouldn't have done that or whatever. We don't know what it meant, but, um, we do know at the time there was a little bit of tension because, um, Hannah didn't really want Charlie Gilly around, who was the father of the baby. And we know it caused some tension between her and her siblings. Yeah. Um, there were some public Facebook exchanges from the hospital that started at the hospital uh, about her decision to not let him up there. Um, yeah. And we, we don't know why, and that's not our business. But so it seems like, um, you know... It was just a, a crazy time in general. Yep. Um, I think Jake, like his demeanor and everything, and him thinking Hannah leaving was a phase. Yeah. He wasn't convinced. Yeah. And I'm sure he's kind of the richer kid in town. And maybe to him, like, stay with me. You have everything you need. But, I mean, there's enough out there to where statements were made about abuse. And we know Jake's attorney is trying to keep that out of court. So, if you look at, at Hannah's social media, it's a very, very indicative of somebody who's being abused. Yeah. Uh, whether it's physically or emotionally. I mean, emotional is, is the same. Abuse yep. is abuse. And you have to keep in mind, she's 15 with a child. I mean, you're not emotionally ready to deal with somebody manipulative. And, and because this is a girl who's got a baby with him and she just thinks, you know, before things went south, that they're going to live forever yeah, and have this family. And, you know, maybe in another life it would have worked out. But I think, I, I really do think that when Hannah started posting those pictures around August, September, um, of Sophia with Charlie Gilly. I think that, that, that set them off. Yeah. That's, uh, you see a lot of issues with that when it's a former boyfriend or a, a ex father, like not ex father. Why well, I just say ex father. Um, I'm sure some people claim to have ex fathers. That's true. <laughs> I've never heard that term though. I don't know why. I don't know where it came from. Uh, like divorced parents, you know, with a new person or whatever. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's, that's tough for them to see. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, so this thing that the investigators asked Bobby Joe and James was like, this is like horrible. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes police ask questions just to see what kind of reaction you give. Um, but they asked them how much money, um, they made to kill the whole family. Yeah, that was according to Dana Roden's dad. He gave an interview with a, a news station, and yeah. That's crazy. I I don't know. I mean, poor, this poor lady, like, she sees half her family dead, and then for weeks, cops are pretty much saying she did it, and I can imagine the, the rumor mill in that small town. Yeah. It had to have just been, like grinding all the gears yep and this family who's dealing with a loss none of us could imagine they're having to worry that everybody thinks they had something to do with it yeah that's a pretty loaded question though yes yeah it is i think it was to get a reaction a shock to see, value yeah, yeah to see what you get um so all right we're gonna dive in the investigation now yeah i think so um so Let's see here. Donald Stone, um, who found Kenneth Roden, he gave an interview and he said that there was blood everywhere. And he was choking up talking about this. And he said that he saw something that no other human should have to see. Um, so the investigators, as soon as they arrest the Rodens, they let the public know this, this was about custody. Yeah. Um, because we had all the theories of the marijuana farms. Um, we had the theory of... Uh, little Chris had been involved, I don't think it was his fault, in a road rage incident. And the woman was sentenced two days before the murders. And she pled no contest to assault charges. So something happened there. She got probation, had to do community service, and had a no contact order for little Chris and Dana. So they looked into that. They looked into um, 
the there was a little bit of evidence that they may have had some cockfighting going on on the on the properties. They found rooster cages and all that. So those were more, I guess, I guess that would be more local stuff like local beef. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of what they were looking at initially, just because I fully believe the reason they were killed the way that they were is to have the investigation go the way it did for a year. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if Hannah and Dana and little Chris were killed and that's it, it really gives law enforcement a good idea where to go look. Yeah. That's the, the rest of the family knows there's a custody thing. Why would she end up dead? She just had a baby. Who would want to kill her? At, so I think, number one, that way nobody could say there was a big custody dispute and here's what I saw. Here's my deal with the whole issue. Like, where do you go in your brain? So you're wanting full custody of your daughter, granddaughter, um, great-granddaughter, well, whatever. Um, so you're wanting that full custody. So you kill the parents. Yeah. Now the kid is, what, in foster care? Yeah, yeah. Because her mom's dead. Her dad's in jail. Her other side of her family on her dad's side, they're in jail. So here this kid has nobody. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it, it just, I don't see how, where your mind goes to get to that point. But Yeah. And it's tough because if if Hannah felt threatened by Jake, she may have felt that, in not giving him Sophia would reduce the amount of time she has to see him. Um, We don't know, but, um, I mean, he got her the day before the murders. So he said he wasn't allowed to see her, but he got her the day before the murders. Yeah. Um, I don't think this had anything to do. I I, I think it's a combination of jealousy, but ultimately I think Angela wanted those babies. Yeah. So Angela makes a statement to the Inquirer, and I think this is when they were in Alaska, correct? Um, and she says, what has happened to us in the last few weeks has been devastating and will follow us for the rest of our lives. Hannah was loved by all of us. She was like a daughter to me then. And now her loss still hurts to this day, especially when we see her every day in Sophia. Mm. That's just sickening. It is. Um, I couldn't lay my head down at night. No. So they made some other comments to mainstream media Um, And we're just going to throw out some of the quotes here we found to be the most relevant. Let's find the real monsters who did this. That was said by Jake Wagner. Uh, Angela says Billy and Chris were like brothers and that Hannah was like a daughter. Jake says he didn't want that, meaning full custody. And he says the visitation agreement was working out just fine. That's contradicting itself oh yeah i mean one minute he says he doesn't get to see her and then yeah and that's the whole you know, yeah reason they're they're mad yeah it really comes down to i'm mad you're posting pictures of your new boyfriend with my daughter yeah so they also say we supplied police with invaluable information to help the investigation uh we cooperated fully with law enforcement they are making us look guilty um, we were tired of being harassed by the authorities and, uh, the publicity. Good job. See, I slowed that down. Uh, seeking politicians. We are scapegoats. Um, the real murderers are still out there. Um, the public said a year ago it is drug related or cartel. Yeah, it's almost like she's saying, go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rewind. Go back over there. Um, why have the authorities not followed up on our leads? Law enforcement did not act quick enough with the leads they had. We want justice more than anyone. Yeah, like, so they, um, and then after they moved to Alaska, Jake, the I think one of the last comments he gave to the media before they moved back, he said, really the point to moving up here was to basically get into a better environment so they wouldn't talk about us. Sophia is getting older, so she wouldn't hear it. And then it followed us here. So we'll talk about their Alaska trip later, but um, so this whole time you're they're doing what's predictable, which is we loved her. Chris was like a brother. I'm trying to do what's best for Sophia, and they did everything. Yeah, uh, it just that uh, got them to that point where they had to do those things. 
Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. So we're going to get into the actual investigation now. Um, in May of 2016, this is a few weeks after the murders, the trailers that everybody was killed in, they moved those to an impound lot to store as evidence. And um, a local station, Fox 19, they start staking out that place and they find over, they were there for six weeks and combined it was like 70 hours that they watched that impound lot and the gate was slightly open and they never saw anybody there. So that's a big deal. Hey, well, it looks like Fox 19 was providing security <laughs> for, for yeah. the, uh, the evidence and the, right. the trailers. Right, right. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so that's a big deal. It, and yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, that's going to come in in trial. Yeah. Whatever they're planning on doing with those trailers, I know part of it was that they wanted to protect the contents inside for the family when all this is over because everything that was in that trailer when they were murdered is still in there. They have not been able to take anything out. Yeah, so, and they said they kept some of it uh, for the family so they yeah. could eventually have it or whatever. I'm just thinking maybe, you know, is one of the tactics going to be to walk the jury through those crime scenes? I mean, that's a powerful thing. Yeah. That is a it, powerful thing for a jury. I've honestly never heard of it. Really? Like, they, we've discussed, like, them not selling, a, a, like, letting somebody move in an apartment mm -hmm. um, because of those, you know, that walking the jury through and stuff or whatever. But I've never heard of them moving the actual whole Oh, the crime scene. Yeah, like, I mean, they've moved over 150 cars. Yeah. Like, the trailers, like... I think they were just worried about uh, curious people that may want to come in the middle of the night and see something, or some a family member had said those trailers would have ended up burned down. Yeah. They just, you know, whether it's uh, people who just don't want to see it because their friends died in there, I don't know. But they really felt like they had to get it in a safe place to preserve everything. And so what they end up and did is they spent a ton of money. I think it was a hundred thousand dollars or more and built, um, kind of a big shed that they're in now. Gotcha. So it's, it's called a pole, a pole barn. It, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, I don't see where you could do this, um, for every case. But, I mean, it's kind of nice. Like, you could go back. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're a detective and you could go back and say, well, this here, that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, so, I mean, yeah, you, you've got your a, crime scene on, you know, police property. And yeah, uh, go do everything with a fine tooth comb. Yep. Um, so, August of 2016, uh, Jake Wagner's property listed for sale. Yep. And then he sells it in March of 2017. Yeah, I looked it up. I think he made one forty one sixty on it, something around there. Hmm. And then I saw some social media posts from Angela where she was inquiring about real estate up there. Um, and in fact, I saw the thread where she was um, asking about the the trailer or, or wh wherever they moved in. It, it looked like it had. Um, you see them a lot here down at the beach. So it's like a single wide trailer with an addition built onto it. Yeah. To make it bigger. Um, so she, before she pulled her social media, she was inquiring about that. They were selling a lot of stuff. They were getting rid of their pigs. They were, at, like, for really cheap. They were getting rid of these beagles they were, you know, selling. Um, so it really seemed like a little bit of a frenzy to get out of there. They yeah, were ready. That's, that's, that's odd. Yeah. That's odd. Because I think, too, if I remember right, because I read an article when um, the police went in at Frederica's place, that her husband was um, not real healthy. Mm -hmm. So that Billy was actually there helping to take care of him. Yeah. So it's kind of odd if you're helping take care of your dad. Yeah, why would you leave? To leave, yeah. Because yeah, you've killed a family of eight. True. Yeah. You know that. True. Yeah. Um. So, 
We talked on the last podcast. Jake looked at Hannah's social media. He was hacking in and looking at her social media for a full year after their deaths. Um, on May 10th, Jake's property was searched. And on the next episode, we're going to go through the evidence list from each property and tell you what they got. Um, but we're just going to go through these really quickly. Um, May the 12th, the other properties were searched belonging to the family. And then May 13th, Fruit Loop. Yeah, Frederica's Flying W Farms is searched. Um, and then June of 2017, uh, Jake and Angela on Facebook, um, and this is to the Cincinnati Inquirer, please let's concentrate on finding the real monsters who did this. Um, yep. Uh, <laughs> it's just deflecting. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, focus on who really did it while we are focusing on. But you have to, from, from the Wagner standpoint, their property at this point, I think they had had a, a search here, search there. But, I mean, nobody's knocking on their door. So I think maybe the Wagners are like, we're good right now. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here while, you know, there's not much heat. Yeah. It wasn't really until the Wagners went to Alaska that everything kind of heated up. Yeah. As far as the investigation. Well, it's just red flags. Yeah. Like you've lived in this area. You have roots here. You have businesses here. Mm -hmm. Like you have family here. So. Yeah. And they, they moved to um, Alaska. I believe it was like May of 2017. And um, they were back in the spring of 2018. So they were gone about a year. Yeah. And it was them. Uh, it was the family. So you have, and I'm saying the family name so you can learn them. Um, Billy, Angela, Jake, George. They also had Sophia with them. And George's little boy that he had custody of. Yeah. So they all moved 4,000 miles away, I might add. Um, this place is about three hours from Anchorage. Um, but they were just telling people that they had better jobs up there and, and that's where they were going to go. Yeah, and I think they had traveled through there or, or like vacation there or something and loved the area and stuff. So Yeah, I've seen a couple of pictures of them up there. I'm just not sure what probably was after the murders because Sophia looked to be about the age she would have been. So yeah, yeah. once they got up there, they started posting on their social media. Yeah, so June of 2017, that's when the Ohio Attorney General and Sheriff Reeder asked the public for information on the Wagner family. Um, they didn't call them a person, call them persons of interest, uh, but they really said everything but that. Yeah. Um, the attorney general says they were laser focused on them. They specifically wanted to know business dealings, vehicles, firearms, ammo, et cetera. Yeah. So I think you're starting to get that, you know, like the frame of the puzzle put together. Yeah. And you got to start filling in those pieces um, I think, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they, they went a year without getting caught, but I think it's one of those things where we're going to find, they probably were looking at these guys from very early on. And this is just one of those cases. You've got to run the marathon and not the sprint. Definitely. Yeah. Cause it was two years. But we, we'll talk later about the one piece of evidence they found that got everything going within a few days. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, they could have been under surveillance in, in Alaska. Like, very well. I'm sure well. they were. Like, I, well, the, the Daily Mail, um, they kind of stalked them out up there. So, you know, when they were up there, I'd say every few weeks, they would do a story where it showed pictures of them going into Walmart with the kids or there was one with Billy on a bike. Can I just say Billy's huge? He's tall, like six and a half foot. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at his stats. Um, he's just a big man. Yeah. A lot of press came out, um, and, and I really wasn't closely following this case, about some of his tattoos as well, which, um, one, he is like a triple triangle that's kind of connected, and apparently that's been linked to white supremacy, but we don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But that was out in mainstream media, so I do feel okay <laughs> saying it on here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. So what, um, 
where are we at? Like, yeah, I'm looking too. Okay, so October 30th. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 2018. Investigators find the last piece of evidence: a silencer in a well. And that apparently was the smoking gun they needed to get them indicted. Wow. So we were talking about silencers before we came on. Yeah. Um, and what I read, and s- some of you may be experts in this, uh, you guys are always awesome to reach out and give us information. So um, it, it kind of depends on the silencer if it um, leaves like extra uh, striations on the bullets and stuff. Um, so it really depends on the silencer. Uh, but it can, they can, it seemed to what we discovered, uh, they can tell um, that this was fired through the silencer. Yeah, so. and w- they never <coughs> found any guns that we know of. Um, so probably being able to link shell casings to that silencer would be that main physical evidence they need. Yeah, and so, we know there was a lot of bullets. So. Oh, yeah. So, so on the 30th of October, they find the silencer and then what, two weeks later, they're all arrested, including the grannies. Yep. Including the grandmothers. Um, so, uh, do we want to go there about the grandmothers now or are you going to wait? No, let's just go ahead and talk about the grandmas and then we'll get down into Jake's indictment. Okay. So... Rita Newcomb, who is Angela Wagner's mom, um, she was accused of helping to cover up the Roden family homicides. Um, She agreed to a plea deal. Um, The first resolution in any of the criminal cases that began the night of the killings, and that's nearly four years ago. So she was accused of forging custody documents um, that were related to the case. And then she lied about it to the grand jury and to investigators. Um, She pled guilty to reduce to a reduced misdemeanor charge of obstructing official business. So in exchange, felony charges of forgery, perjury and obstructing justice were dismissed. Mm -hmm. So the prosecutor um, said in court that a handwriting expert concluded that uh, Miss Newcomb did not sign the documents herself. Um, I thought that was big. Mm -hmm. Um, The prosecutor said that uh, Miss Newcomb admitted to falsely telling a grand jury and investigators that she that she did so only because her daughter Angela asked her to, or told her to. Mm -hmm. Um, The judge said Newcomb must still comply with conditions of her bond. And she cannot have any contact with her relatives. Um, He did, however, order her released from house arrest and said an electronic ankle monitor could be removed by a court official. Um, The, what she's, um, uh, her plea deal, the maximum sentence a judge could give her is 90 days in jail. Yeah. Um, so, but she, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure she's a witness for the prosecution. Yeah, it, it seems, seems and like it. that was what her daughter got in trouble. Part of the reason she got in trouble was telling her not to testify against the family. Yeah, like you're, like you get the whole, here we go again, Lori Vallow, <laughs> uh, Mark Means, your phone call is being recorded <laughs> and you're still, you're going to say, mom, don't testify against me. And get on a three-way call with a co-conspirator. Dude, I want to be the ones who listen in those phone calls. I would, you know, I would be like, guys, you should hear this. I know. Listen to what this person's saying. No, I would want to chime in. Yeah, I would yeah. be like. <laughs> You know I'm listening, right? Yeah. I'd be like, girl, he's got 30 years in jail. You better move on. Yeah, you just better <laughs> move on. He don't love you. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I'm teasing. This is God. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> um, no. But so moving on to Frederica. Um, so all charges, and this was in June of 2019, all charges um, against, uh, she was, well, she was accused of perjury and obstruction of justice. Um, and they dropped all those charges. Um, the prosecutor filed a motion uh, during Wagner's last pretrial hearing before her case was to go to trial in July. Um, so the judge accepted the motion, and the case is officially dismissed. 
she did state, she made a statement and said they didn't have any evidence against her. Yeah. Um, but the prosecution did not make any comments coming out um, yeah. of the courtroom. So nobody really knows if they would have had enough to convict her or what. So. I, th- I think it was determined that she bought the vest after the murders because she was worried about her son. Yeah. Knowing the rodents. Yeah. yeah. But and another big thing was whether or not it was ordered off eBay or Amazon. She said one and it was the other. So it's not really clear to me if it was just kind of an oopsie thing. Like we shouldn't have arrested her. Yeah. We got a little rest happy. But um, uh, she, you know, so that was over with for her. Yeah. There's one thing that I've got to research a little better. But apparently at some point before the arrests, they were, the whole family was up at Grandma Frederica's Flying W Farm. And there was a conversation that they had that was overheard by somebody who reported it. And we don't know who that was, uh, that they were saying if they got arrested, they would arrange to murder, I believe, the prosecutor and the sheriff. Yeah. That has been talked about in court when one, there was a witness, I believe, during Georgia, one of Georgia's hearings. I think it was a bond hearing. He was asking for a lower bond. And the guy on the stand was like, uh, here's why he shouldn't get bond. He, him and his fam- family said how they wanted to kill me. Yeah. If they got arrested. Yeah. So that kind of popped up. And before the Wagners went to Alaska, Jake took three of his storage trailers, and it was I think it seemed to be a lot of the contents of the house, um, and two trucks to a car lot where they knew the owner, and they leave it there. So the cops eventually come and, and search these cars, and inside the cab of Jake's truck, they find a box. And I think it had important papers or something. I mean, something was labeled important, which is going to be what police go to first. Um, And they found the custody papers and the Walmart receipt for the shoes that Angela bought for the murders. Yeah. So she had bought these specific shoes from Walmart that were Velcro and probably just to not bring any kind of DNA from their house or anything into uh, the crime scene that could later be identified. But for me, I'm thinking kind of a smart thing to get Velcro shoes where you're not going to trip if you're running. Yeah. But anyways, and then there was a hearing um, where the camera got some close-ups of some of the evidence pictures that the witness was uh, looking at. And do you remember what we saw on those? Um, I don't. Oh, okay. I was just thinking. <laughs> I was I was thinking – this is a note to myself. If I ever have important papers, I'm going to put on there. These mean nothing. Right. Yeah. This yeah. is garbage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody looks there. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So there was some blood spatter on a wall and it was a good volume of blood spatter. It looked like the, there investigators have referenced a picture about Jake Wagner holding a Glock pistol in his open hand. And that was it. Uh, that was in there. There's a picture of Angela going into Walmart on the day she bought the shoes, which ironically was the day that Hannah Roden had her baby shower for baby Kylie. Wow. So as she's having her shower, um, Angela's going to buy her family the shoes that will kill her, that will take their little feet right up to those trailers. Wow. Isn't that ugh, crazy? This is so weird. Crazy, crazy. Um, so... The Wagners, right before their arrest, they felt like they were being harassed by the Attorney General, uh, Mr. DeWine, who is now the governor of Ohio. Yeah, I didn't know that. (laughs) So we're just going to hop on real quick and do Jake's indictment, just a little rough summary of it. Um, It was filed November 13th, 2018. And one of the things they put in there was the the shoe purchase at Walmart. And... um, they referenced some of the evidence against them was the brass catcher, which catches your shell casings. Yeah, I know. And somebody reached out and said that was normally on like rifles and stuff. Uh-huh. So we know there was a twenty two rifle mm-hmm. uh, that was part of some of the guns, I think. Right. So that's probably where that comes in. So they had um, ammunition, magazine clip, the RF signal detector where they can maybe look and find cameras. Um Parts to build a silencer, I, I think if they hadn't have found that silencer, would we have arrests? Because that's what they were waiting on. They even said, we found the piece of evidence we've been waiting for. Dude. Yeah, I mean, what if they hadn't have found that silencer? I would have looked on the well, like, early, 
I would have looked down there early on. I was going to say, like, normally people, like, I know my great-grandfather hid money in a well. That had been the first place I looked. Mm. I would have been in there. I always think about Lassie saving Timmy from the well. Yeah. I, I, Sorry, that's so random. But yeah, I say that to my brother's dog. And he looks at me like, uh-huh. <laughs> I'd say, yeah. what's the matter, boy? Timmy falling a well? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so the forging documents, um, talking about the custody stuff, uh, dude, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just all dumb. It, it really is. Like it's dumb. Like forging documents. Come on. Yeah. And it goes to show you how I, I don't think Jake had any idea of how relationships work because when you break up with somebody, you might be with somebody new. It's a control issue. Um, yeah. and it, it, if you think about it, had they had any wits about them, they would have said, okay, they have money if they really were being denied the kid or if he wanted full custody in general. They had the goods to get Sophia out of that house. All they had to do was turn in the grow operation. Yeah. They could have went through it in a legit way. Yeah, my thing about forging the documents, I mean, it's not like you're forging permission slip to go to... Uh, on a field trip. Right. Like you're forging like major, major documents. And I think the rush on that was, I believe they had to cross the Canadian border to get into Alaska. So Sophia would have had to have had, had to, when one parent, you have to have like a note from the other parent or permission from the other parent to take a kid across a border, I believe. Hmm. He was asked and then he had to tell them, oh, her mom's dead. Oh, wow. So some of the theory is that the custody papers were done so quickly because they, they knew they wanted to move to Alaska, you know, or maybe he just wanted to get her right out of the gate. Hmm. I just, I, I'm, I bet Angela and Frederica, I bet that was a battle of the alpha females. I can see yeah. it. I can see it. Angela's very smug. If you watch her in court, she's... um. She seems like she wore the britches in that family. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, that's what it seems like to me. Yep. Um, I mean, you got your telling your mom what to do. Yeah. Well, uh, these kids were so attached to their parents. It's very strange. Um, it's almost like they were perpetually, I guess, teenagers where they're still home. You know, I mean, it's just. From people that knew them, it seems like they didn't make any decisions outside of that house, whether it was a decision that Jake needed to make about his relationship or anything like that. It seems like it ran like a hierarchy, though. Yeah. It's yeah. like, a, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying this is what it was, but almost like a mob family, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, I make all the decisions and you do what I say, like, kind of like, so. Yeah, but I, I, I think, too, it's just... I f there is a word for families like that. And it's just essentially where the kids don't progress. Yeah. They're kind of stuck. And so they're with mom and dad all day. They eat three meals a day with mom and dad. They live with mom and dad, whatever. Um, so it's like they can't make their PB and J by themselves. Like my son just, you know, came in here 10 minutes ago and about call me mommy dearest. Cause I won't feed him three peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> Will you help me make my PB and J? He's thirteen years old, and I, I mean he's taller than me. And I know it's a mommy thing, but I'm I'm trying to teach independence a little yeah. bit, you know. He was grinning the whole time. Oh, I know he's such a sweet boy. I yeah. love that kid. He was uh, waiting on you to bite. Oh, because he yeah. knows nine times out of ten he can look at me and smile, and I'll do it, and that's yeah. okay because he's a mama's boy, but not like a mama's boy like the Roden boys. No, no, no. <laughs> I think he'll be okay later to separate and do his own thing. Yeah. Um, so they just did a lot, you know, and we talked about it on the last one, counter surveillance, just of the properties, the pets, they monitored all the social media accounts and, um, all that was named in the indictment. Dude, I'm going to tell you, I think surveillance in those areas, and I've just looked at overhead views, so I've obviously not driven through there, but it seems like it would be very hard to surveillance an area like that. It's all it's, trees. Yeah. And it's, it's not like you're in New York City where there's 10 million people mm -hmm. and you can just blend in and be like, okay, I'm following you and you don't even know it. Like if your car is parked near the house on the side of the road or whatever, mm -hmm. like I'm going to know. Right. Yeah. Because there's nothing out there. I think a lot of it probably stemmed from that grow operation. Yeah. Um, just to keep an eye on their plants and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
I'm just talking about in general, like oh. them survey, you know, like doing surveillance on the rodents, oh, like oh. following. You know what I mean? Like seeing their routines and following them and all that stuff. Yeah. Like to me, that's like I don't know how you did it. I will quote somebody uh, commented on our social media that's from there and says, "Yeah, it's in the sticks." Yeah. Um, yeah. It seems it. I yeah. Mean, so I just don't know how you, how do you run surveillance like that with not a lot of people around? Yeah, I wonder. I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but I think that's probably a good little stopping point for us. Yeah. Uh, so we're just giving you little bits and pieces because once you sort of absorb all this and have a good grip on who everybody is, um, man, this could, this is going to be a long, drawn out case and four trials. And the reason they're not trying them as co-conspirators like Chad and Lori. Uh, is because this is a this is a death penalty case, I believe. I, I I'm pretty sure they're going to go for that. So they can't they can't be co-conspirators in that. Yeah, it's very when you have a death penalty case, I think you have to have like two very specific attorneys on your team, and um, there's a lot of things you have to do. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Uh, tune in tomorrow for more coverage on the Pike County massacre. We will continue to catch you up on this case. And we will see you tomorrow.